Uh, so it's on a white background kind of floating out in space. Uh, it's pretty obvious that we need to apply some different materials to this thing, um, especially, uh, well, the handle part. The blade is probably okay with this aluminum material, but uh, the handle needs a different material. So um, in terms of applying materials, um, again, just a quick overview. I'm going to, if, if you can't get out of your camera view because the camera is locked and you're trying to figure out how to manipulate the view, just go into another view over here and then you're out of camera view. Okay, so uh, this is where you want to start applying materials. I like to apply materials by solid body, so I've got the blade and the butt of the, uh, of the knife are, are made out of metal, so we'll leave those. Let's see, the handle, we can probably do some kind of a, a plastic. So, um, I don't know why that part's not green. Okay, uh, so I'm selecting the handle, and then I'm using my material button up here. And by default, everything is uh, polished aluminum. Oops. Okay. So in your material library here, you can go through and select a starting point. Um, and I'll do a, I'll do a different uh, video about materials. Um, but let's. I like these textured plastics, so we'll choose something like this. This one here, and uh, I don't know. Maybe the handle is uh, deep green, or something like that. So we'll choose that. Okay. Um, this must be something else here. Right. Okay, so let me go back to my camera view. And we'll do a test rendering to see what that looked like. All right. So, green handle. Um, I actually can't tell. Let me just see what it looks like from over here. Oh, no, that looks fine. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to play around a lot with materials here because I'm just showing the workflow. Uh, one thing you do want to note is that once you've assigned a material, if you want to change it, you don't just reselect the thing. Well, I, I guess you could, but you could reselect it and hit the material button again. What I prefer is to go to the render manager here, and you'll see all your um, you'll see all your assigned materials. So if I just want to change, you know, I, I this is that plastic that I assigned. If I just want to tweak that color. I can just double click on it and go to, let's maybe it's a deep brown or something, okay? Click OK. Now that has updated that material and everything that's applied to. That's a lot better than like just choosing a whole new material or, or reselecting geometry and adding another material to it. If you can find it over here, you can edit it from here um, and that can, uh, that can save you a lot of time. Um, okay, so let's go back to our camera view. And so I'm, as I'm doing this material work, I just keep doing test renderings from, uh, from my camera view. Okay, so let's say we're, we're happy with the lighting and materials here, even though they're obviously not very refined. Um, when it's time to do your final rendering, you need to do a couple things. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is in your rendering options, document properties, you're going to want to turn that anti-aliasing to very high. That'll make a much more refined, high-quality image. You're also going to want to render to a file instead of to the screen. And that's with this render to file button here. That'll render to, say, a JPEG image or a TIFF file or what have you. Um, in this case, a high-quality JPEG is probably fine. So let me say render to file here, and I'll just render to um, we'll just render to my data directory or whatever. Uh, diving knife. I'm going to choose uh, JPEG picture as the output format. You can change what resolution you're going to render to. So you know you might want to do 1600 by 1200 for a large screen rendering. If you're rendering for print. You're actually going to probably going to go and want to go to inches here, and you know, for an inkjet printer, 200 dots per inch is fine. Um, if I was doing, you know, something for an eight and a half by 11 layout, maybe my image would be, I don't know, um, 10 inches wide by 7.5 high. Image quality here for JPEG, you want to put that on high. This is not the anti-aliasing or rendering quality. This is the uh, compression in the JPEG file. So you want that to be high. You don't want to over compress your, your nicely rendered image. Once you've got all this set up, you can hit render there. 
I'm not going to do it now because it'll take too long. It'll you'll see a progress thermometer and it'll say that the the file has been rendered. You can go then go o open up that file in Photoshop and 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 work with it. So that's your basic rendering uh, workflow. Um, be sure to check out the video that is also going to be posted on indirect illumination because that um, 